Welcome to the Tuesday, November 12, 2013 School Board Business Meeting. If you'll join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Uh, so tonight, sitting in the seat beside me is Jane Golding, our Director of Instructional Support, who is here on behalf of uh, Superintendent Nato, who is in China, visiting schools there and, uh, and blogging uh, as best as she can through the Great Wall. Um, I recommend her, her blogs. Uh, do we have any adjustments to tonight's agenda? No, seeing none. Item two, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion? Um, I move that we approve the school board minutes as listed in tonight's agenda in item two. Any discussion? One comment. It's, it's move, but under the school board minutes, uh, it, it, item seven it says, uh, reaffirm their confidence in Mr. Holman's representation. That technically wasn't what you did. You gave me authority to make decisions on resolutions. For the future, that's what you should do. Give authority to the representative to make decisions on the resolutions. The minutes aren't actually accurate. Okay. Do you want to, do you want to just correct the minutes? Just change or? the sentence that reviewed the list of proposed resolutions and uh, granted authority to Mr. Hellman to vote in his you, perceived best interest of the district. Somewhere. Do you want to amend the motion to exclude the, those minutes? That'd be fine. Okay. Or just which, which one? That's like the regular, the, um, item C, the regular business meeting? A big one? Yes. That's, okay. I would change, I move that we modify 5C to change the minutes under section seven. I, I think what we need to do is amend the motion to exclude item C and then we'll amend the minutes and then they will come back before the board at our December business meeting. Okay. Would you like a new motion? Or you can amend the motion. I amend the approval of the school board minutes motion to exclude the minutes from the regular business meeting on Tuesday, October 8th, 2013, but include all the others as listed in tonight's agenda. Okay, then I think the, the record will reflect what the, what the change needs to be in the minutes. Uh, okay, any other discussion? All those in favor? Seven, zero. How are you doing? I'm good. Okay, all right. Item three, our student representatives. All right, well, school's been going very well. We finished up Spirit Week, and it went extremely, extremely well. The whole school came together, and especially for the football game, and we had a lot of fun that week. Now we're moving on to planning Winterfest and prom. And also, quarter one just ended, I think, two Fridays ago, and it went very well. We do live in a very challenging school district. So to see students working hard to get their grades is always rewarding. And on that note, we're going to talk about the honor roll as well. Um, yeah, so in discussions uh, with, the, with the Student Advisory Council at, at the school, there has been a lot of discussion about the honor roll and the, the necessity of the honor roll that is kind of questioned by some students, some viewing it as a sort of uh, an exclusionary factor to some students. And so what uh, we've been doing is just talking to uh, Mr. Shedd about the honor roll and seeing what changes need to be made or whether it needs to be removed. And there has been a poll sent out to the students about the honor roll to see, to get kind of a, a wider perspective other than, the, uh, other, other than just the representatives for the Student Advisory Council. And uh, also, on a slightly different note, uh, the speech team won first place at the recent Falmouth tournament, and the, the theater is production is going to take place uh, the day before and the day before that, and the and two days before uh, Thanksgiving, and it is called Take Four. Yes. 
And I believe there is a middle school representative also here to speak. Oh, great. Good evening. My name is Mariana, and I'm the seventh grade representative. Um, on Friday, we had an assembly towards our veterans. We also had a hallway that was posted with photos that we all walked through afterwards. And also, we have been talking about changing our school into the 5210 program, which is basically trying to get our students to become more active. And we are planning to try to do that sooner than, rather than later. And we are then to try to poll to see if the students would like to do that. And um, that is basically all. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? I have a question. Student rep. Mary? Um, I have a question for Tim, actually, and the honor roll. Are you talking, are, are you all talking about doing away with the honor roll per se or publishing the honor roll? Just the publishing. Just the publishing yeah. and the, okay. That's interesting. And especially because many, I know that schools in Cumberland County tend to go towards the 85 and above is considered a B, but I know colleges look at an 80 and above to be a B. Right. The so it yeah. makes it a little bit more challenging to get, um, to achieve the honor roll. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. Was there, is there another question? That was my question. Thank you. Well, okay. yep. Don, um, I just want to say, Mariana, welcome. Mm -hmm. We're glad to be here. I know it's very scary. Uh, up here, you did a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, item for comments from the public on agenda item I, agenda items i believe we may have comments tonight if we do i would ask you to approach the podium state your name and address um, and keep your comments to three minutes and two items on the agenda sir good evening <clears throat> um, i'm tom dunham and I've owned property at 12 Becky's Cove Lane for the past 35 years. <clears throat> I would like to address the proposal before you to establish a $1,750,000 revenue bond for deferred maintenance. My concern lies in the suggestion to replace the various EPDM roofs. I am very familiar with this roof system and have owned industrial properties well over 150,000 square feet and many of those are 25 years or older. Those roofs have maintained their integrity over the years and likely will for many more years to come. Based on experience, annual inspections and maintenance are the keys to longevity. This week I spoke to the owner of Industrial Roofing, one of Maine's largest roofing companies, and Janet Hansen, who is a partner at SMRT, the architects. I asked them their opinion on the high school roof, which has a one eighth slope versus one and a quarter uh, versus one quarter slope. They both stated <clears throat> that in itself it is not unusual, nor does it suggest a replacement. Many roofs were constructed in this way due to the value engineering and cost costs. Yes, today they would prefer a quarter inch slope, but it should not in itself be the determining factor for replacement. Current EPDM manufacturers are offering up to 30 years in war for warranty, which underscores their success in this climate. My experience suggests that annual service maintenance is a must. A prudent course may be to replace the seams, which we have done multiple times over the years to extend the longevity of the roof, and it works for a lot less money than a replacement. This annual service and maintenance cost should <clears throat> easily be covered in the annual projected debt service savings. Respectfully, I ask that <clears throat> we defer this bond decision until we receive a more thorough assessment on the school's roofs. It's my understanding, because I got an email today from Greg, that <clears throat> this report may be forthcoming in the next two weeks. So let's see what that is first before you um, make the decision on the bond, the amount of the bond, because <clears throat> what I read was uh, the roofs are about $800,000 within that $1.75 million, <clears throat> and uh, it's a significant amount. 
Given that we will soon be reducing the school indebtedness, I suggest we should first recognize that the annual state school subsidies are tenuous at best. Thus, we should establish a healthy rainy day fund. Secondly, we certainly could apply a portion of the projected annual savings toward capital improvements without increasing additional debt. <clears throat> you owe it to your Cape senior citizens who are on a fixed, fixed income and those families who are financially struggling to make ends meet, that they receive some financial relief due to the ensuing debt retirement. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gross. Uh, hello, my name is William Gross from 7 Seaview Avenue, and I'm speaking about the same issue on the uh, $1,750,000 bond. I'm against uh, the, uh, having the council vote to issue this bond. And I want to begin by saying, well, what are the consequences if you do issue the bond? I uh, plugged into my Excel calculator the uh, $1,750,000, a 20-year bond, and a 4% interest. And this is what Excel shot back out. Over the 20 years, we'll be paying $825,000 in interest, in addition to the principal we pay back. That's $825,000 we taxpayers will be paying in our property taxes and the $825,000 will not buy us a single square foot of roof, a single furnace, a single electrical panel. It's all just interest going back to whoever loans us the $1,750,000. Now, if we can make the improvements without issuing the bond, you will automatically save $825,000 for the taxpayers of Cape Lisbon. And I, that's exactly what I think you should do. The other consequence of issuing the bond is the annual debt service on this bond will be about $130,000 a year. And this means that our, our, in 2016, when our uh, debt service is going to drop by $700,000, we'll lose our, our debt service will only drop by $570,000 instead of by $700,000. We'll lose $130,000 of that potential savings. Now, I believe there's no need at all to uh, to, to issue the bond in order to pay for the capital improvements that, that the, the council has uh, looked at and made this wonderful 10-year plan. I think it's a great idea looking at our capital needs for 10 years. But let's look at how we can fund them. And, and if we look just at the documents here, uh, I would address, ask you to look, well, uh, I went into the, uh, the handout, uh, and it's a handout for combined municipal and school uh, funding. And in there, on page 12, it gives major projects exceeding $150,000, and it lists them by year. And indeed, in here, we have, in the year 2016, $1,750,000 of, of capital expenses uh, for, to be spent in that year. And the $700,000 that I referred to, the debt service, in 2016, we're going to get a reduction in debt service of $700,000. And that's every year after 2016. And I'm saying that will pay for these improvements. Well, in 2016, of course, $700,000 can't pay for uh, $1,750,000. $1, but look at the year 2017. There's not a single dollar in, in major projects for the school in that year. And let's look at the year 2018. And there's only $435,000. So over those three years, we'll have $700,000 a year. That's $2,100,000, and we'll, we'll only have $1,750,000 from 2016 to spend to, to, of capital improvements, and we'll only have another $435,000 in 2018. So that $700,000, just based by the schedule you put together, will pay for all of the, those three years. And let's look at the years after that. In 2019, we're going to have $150,000 in capital improvements for the gymnasium. Uh, there's a brickwork waterproofing. Uh, Mr. Moore, is that part of the school budget or the municipal? Can you tell me? Well, I don't know myself. Depends what building it's for. If it's for a school building, it's a school budget. If it's for a municipal building, it'd be. Well, let's municipal. take the worst case. Let's assume it's for the school school budget. So that means in, in the year 2019, we have $150,000 for the gym and $250,000 for the brickwork waterproofing. Now that means we have $400,000 to, to in major projects, but we have $700,000 in savings in the year 200, 2019. Likewise, in the year 2020, 
We only have in the major projects $200,000 of it. We have $700,000 in savings from the, the reduction in debt service. We don't need the bond to pay for that. Now, it is true, in the year 2021 and 2021, uh, 22, we have about a million dollars in projects on here, and we only have about $700,000 in savings. But in the year 2023, we only have $300,000 in projects, and in the year 2024, we have no, no dollars in projects. So we can certainly spread those projects out and, and, uh, and use the $700,000 in annual savings from our the debt service uh, to pay for these. And again, in the, in the year 2025, we're going to get another $450,000 in debt service savings because three more bonds we paid off. And we'll have then a total of $1,100,000 in, in, in annual debt service savings as, as long as we do two things. As long as we do not issue a new school bond and as long as we keep all of the other items in our budget uh, at the same level of spending they are adjusted for inflation, increase them each year for inflation. And, and I think what this shows is that we can fund all of the major projects that are on here for, uh, for by just without issuing any more bonds and merely by uh, using the, the $700,000 a year savings and debt service. Now I think there are two questions that this, if the school board is going to vote on this, they should they should answer these two questions. Now, the first one is, is the, uh, in the Harriman Report. The, the, Har the, uh, the Harriman Report. The Harriman Report says that there's about $2 million in roofing uh, uh, capital improvement projects in the high school, and about $2 million in capital improvement projects in the middle school and on code. So it's $4 million in roofing projects. But the Harriman Report specifically says that the, the roofing projects that were done in 2004 on the high school uh, were done with the, the previous speaker talked about that, that uh, were not done to specification. They were, the slope was only one eighth of an inch per foot instead of one quarter of an inch per foot. And Harriman says the roof will deteriorate. It won't last its whole lifetime. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but this seems like a, 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 a pure case of negligence by the contractor who put it in. And, and, the question that I'm, I think the school board should answer is why aren't we suing the contractor to, and taking the damage, the money we recover in damages, and using that as part of our capital improvement program? Likewise, the Harriman Report talks about the, the middle school roof. Again, there are $2 million in, uh, in capital improvement car, uh, uh, roofing, new roofing that Harriman identifies on the middle school in Pond Cove. The, the Harriman Report says on the middle school roof that the on the ballasted part of the roof, the ballast is stone. So you tap the fabric roof, and then there is a level of stones put on top of the roof. That's the ballast. It says that the normal practice on a ballasted roof is you put a, a nylon mat in between the fabric roof and the stones. And the Harriman Report says this was not done by the contractor who put that in. And the Harriman Report says without that mat, the roof will not last its expected 25 or 30 years lifetime. So again, this is another case where it seems to me, a non-lawyer, that we would sue the contractor, get some damage, some relief, some damages for, the, for them not meeting specifications, and use those damages as part of the fund, the new roofs, the $4 million in new roofing we're going to be spending over the next 10 years. And the, and the last point I have is the, is the second question I think the board should answer. If, if the board is going to borrow $1,750,000 mm -hmm. from uh, in order to do these capital improvement program, uh, projects. Excuse me. If the, the board is going to borrow this money, then what is the board going to do with the $700,000 per year in savings from the debt service that we're going to get? How is the board going to spend this money? If, for example, if the board decides, well, we're going to, we're going to save $700,000, we can reduce property taxes by $700,000. That would be about a 4% reduction in everyone's property taxes in the town. If the board is going to do that, I suspect there would be a groundswell of support for issuing a bond. But I suspect that the school board has other plans for the $700,000. And I think it's only fair that before the school board votes, on borrowing $1,750,000 for capital improvement program, the, the school board should tell the voters and taxpayers in the town what you intend to do with the $700,000 in savings that we will get in 2016 and every year thereafter when our debt service 
uh, decreased. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gross. Um, <clears throat> I would just point out that we, we not to you, you um, that we follow a, 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 an agenda here, and we will be getting um, back, circling back to this issue toward the end of the agenda. Um, and at that point, there will be an opportunity for board discussion or questions um, or comments. So um, that's, why, that's why we'll be getting to that later in the night and not just right now. Were there any other comments from the public on agenda items? Okay, seeing none, we're moving on to communications. And um, uh, why don't we start with the, do we have the coach here yet? Or, or Mr. Thorpe. Oh, Mr. Thorpe is here. Why don't we start with the boys' uh, cross country team? Uh, congratulations, come on up. Jeff is, Jeff is Jeff Thorak here? He is. I thought he usually led this, but that's all right. Hi. Hi. Um, Derek Bayou, the uh, coach of the boys' cross country team. And uh, I'm glad to be back here. It's here last year, and uh, the boys uh, were, won the state title again, so we're back. Um, it was an, a great season. Um, these guys put in a lot of work starting in June. And, uh, you know, a lot of miles. You probably saw them out on the roads. And uh, they were really committed uh, to excellence. And uh, we had a great year, uh, undefeated uh, regular season, conference champions, uh, regional champions, and uh, state champions, and 11th in the New Englands last weekend. Um, th should, should I call the yes. 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 Please yes. bring the players forward. Come on up. <laughs> We don't have uh, all the gentlemen uh, with us today. Some are competing in a science meet for the school. Uh, Just, uh, so. By the way, the TV's over there if you want to show them the uh, trophy. Yeah, turn around. Face the Wrong other. way. <laughs> the big thing right back there. That way you get your faces on TV. Actually, I think this camera is on. Or no, he just turned that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, okay. Move the red light. Maybe. Don't confuse them. <laughs> Follow the red light. Um, the young gentlemen that we do have here, uh, we have Chris Koval. Vince Tarpo, uh, Julian Pelzer, one of our captains, Peter Doan, one of our captains, uh, Mitch Morris, uh, we've got Mac Hufford, um, Sam Earnshaw, and Mike Mangravito. Um, and for the people on TV, he was reading right to left, just so they know who he is. Very good. <laughs> um, so uh, these young gentlemen, just had another outstanding year. They've represented their school, their community with uh, great honor and integrity. Um, just an outstanding group to work with. I'm very lucky to have the senior group that we've had for the last four years. Um, Liam Simpson, who is not here, Trevor Ewald, um, along with Julian, Peter, and uh, Sam. Uh, they really returned this program to the top. Um, it was since the last time they had won before last year was 2006, and so now we've got two in a row, and I think the um, foundation is there to continue uh, to be one of the top teams. Uh, we've got a couple of top returners, and uh, you know, we've got some young kids here ready to step into the role next year. Um, so it's been an outstanding year, and uh, thank you all. If you guys could stay, if you could stay up here, um, Senator Millet is here uh, with a legislative sentiment. Oh, I'm sorry, and uh, Coach, you didn't talk about the New Englands. You might want to say when she's done giving the award, you might want to talk about the New Englands as well. Okay. And Representative Kim Monahan Derrick is also here. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll just say I, I have the pleasure of having a member of my family on this team mm -hmm. and, and experienced for the first time ever in my life the culture of cross-country racing and training. And I am here to tell you that it is one of the most astonishing 
things I have ever witnessed in my lifetime. These young men and women from the girls' cross-country chain run at least six times a week, mile after mile, push themselves to the point of nearly breaking, to only then go to a race and push themselves to the point of breaking and beyond. And the discipline and courage that these young men show is really quite um, remarkable and uh, should make all of us proud to have them representing the schools and the town of Cape Elizabeth. Um, and then uh, Kim will read the sentiment. So State of Maine, be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing the Cape Elizabeth High School 2013 Boys Cross Country uh, Team on winning its 2013 Class B Cross Country State Championship. We congratulate the members of the team on this achievement and send them our best wishes, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 126th legislature and the people of the state of Maine. Sponsored by Senator Millett of Cumberland County, Representative Scott Hammond of Cape Elizabeth, and Representative Monahan Derrick of Cape Elizabeth. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, as Mr. Uh, Hillman said, he wanted me to speak about the New Englands. Um, we competed in that race on Saturday down in Manchester against uh, uh, the best teams from Rhode Island, Connecticut, Vermont, and uh, New Hampshire. And uh, unfortunately, we got the worst spot on the starting line. And so we had a lot of work to do just to get into position throughout the race. Um, but we did a great job. Liam Simpson, who is not here, he's at the science meet. Um, got an all New England award. He was eighth overall. Um, that's a pretty outstanding accomplishment. The first all New England athlete I've coached uh, in cross country. And uh, you know, the team finished 11th, which is an outstanding accomplishment against the best um, from around the area in, in New England. Um, just, it was just a cap, just capped off a great season that race. And, uh, you know, I thought we might have been able to do a little bit better with a better spot. We really had a battle. Liam was in 60th place at the mile, and he worked his way up to eighth. So, as you can imagine, it was not an easy thing. But uh, these guys competed with, you know, outstanding. They were just outstanding all year long. So, you know, just a great way to end the season. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to ask the coach a couple questions. Sure. Team can sit. Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed that, uh, my son is no longer on the team, and I was particularly pleased that uh, you made it to the States and to the New Englands again. So Trevor, who gave up his place to my son to run in the New Englands, was actually able to run in the New Englands when he gave up his spot last year, which is pretty unbelievable. But we also had some great accomplishments. Just so people can understand how great some of our runners ran. If you could like say pick the top five guys and give like in the state what what was their average per mile I think it'll stun some people particularly Liam's and um, yeah um, as I mentioned Liam was actually the state runner-up he ran um, his final time was 16 19 for 5k um, that's round five ten or so per mile but his his time at the New England meet was a 504 average at 1545 um, Peter Doan was fifth in the state um, he ran a 1637 and this course at Twinbrook is not a, a flat course it's very course. hilly and uh, you know it's tough to run those times uh, Mitch Morris um, in his first year of cross country he was eight in the state and he is the number one returner in class B next year based on the state meet results and we had uh, Kyle Kennedy uh, he's a junior he was 12th overall um, and then we had Julian Pelzar, who was top 27. So all these young gentlemen actually got up to be honored. They honored the top 30 at the state meet. So we had all five guys up there. Um, we were the only team to do that. And, uh, you know, we also had a, an athlete that was injured. He was our number three runner all year, Will Britton. Um, so we had to run without him in the championship. So that made it a lot tougher, you know, when you lose one of your top guys. But, uh, you know, these guys didn't let that bother them. 
um, they just the next man stepped up and they ran as a team and you know the end result was what we wanted I, I just want to add to that um, coming from a small school like Cape and having the number of people achieve that kind of ranking in the state and in New England is pretty unbelievable um, uh, particularly impressed that our top five all got recognized as being in the top 30. That's pretty amazing for a class of 130 kids. And we have some superb kids there. Not only are they great runners, I know most of them, uh, they're, they're really great kids. And I think as a school district, we're proud and I'm particularly very proud of them all. So thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Soccer side. Okay, um, so now we're going to move on to recognition of one of our own, um, Mary Townsend, who is serving in her last school board um, business meeting uh, tonight. Um, and there may be members of the board or members um, of the legislature who are here who want to <laughs> offer um, some some thoughts. Uh, why don't we start with the Senator? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, thank you, Mary. <laughs> this is a fantastic sign, says. Um, and I'm just so pleased that I'm able to be here this evening to, um, to just personally thank Mary Townsend for her um, you, you, we measure things by years, but really it should be um, uh, calories, I would imagine, the amount of energy that is expended. Um, certainly over the, the, the time that, that Mary was serving, there were a number of very challenging transitions, um, but you wouldn't know that from afar. Everything just seemed to sail along perfectly. Um, but um, as someone who has been on the board herself, I know that there's a lot of work that goes behind um, what, what we see in the public and um, your passion, your sense of purpose and perfection, dedication um, is something that we as a town um, are grateful for and value and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you, Rebecca. David? Yeah, I'd like to say a few points about Mary. Um, I've known Mary for about 60 years, I think. Um, I'm wondering about how quickly you got into the math. Well, uh, Mary and I started uh, uh, about eight or nine years ago. Are we, are we roasting Mary? Or are we this, is, this is my idea of a compliment. Right? <laughs> if she looks that good at 60, she will be complimented. And don't interrupt me again. <laughs> Uh, we started, uh, I was invited to an organization called Citizens Advocating for Public Education, which I first met Mary uh, seven or eight years ago or so. And uh, it was a room, I didn't know anybody in the room except for maybe one person. And I walked into the room and noticed it was only myself and Frank Avanelli were the only two males in the room. And uh, uh, a wide variety of very powerful people, some of whom were in that room, powerful uh, ladies and it was an awful lot of fun. I learned a lot but I noticed this young lady with a southern accent who was so polite and so kind and smiled at everybody and I'm thinking to myself, oh, we're gonna get just creamed if we're gonna be led by this southern belle. And by about the second meeting I realized that um, uh, Mary, being the southern belle, uh, had a core of steel, a great intellect, and even though she had a smile on, she totally ran that room and all the very strong-willed people in it. And I remember saying to Frank, boy, we're two little kitties in a room full of very large lions, and we got to keep our mouth shut for the next couple of years. Um, I've uh, learned a lot from Mary uh, being on board with her. It may not seem it, but I've learned a lot of diplomatic skills. I've learned a lot of uh, consideration, being nice to people not being as sarcastic as I'm capable of being. And I asked Mayor, in diplomacy and a variety of things, not cross-examining as much as I used to, and I asked Mary, after four years, uh, how, how do you think? She goes, well, you're better, a little better. Uh, I think that's quite an accomplishment. But I do want to say to Mary that 
I, and I mean this with, with from the deepest rest, recesses of my heart, I don't think I've been a smarter, more insightful, more compassionate uh, person since I've moved to Cape. I am going to miss you terribly on this uh, school board. Um, you've been a great leader, and I'm going to leave with one small example of how Mary never ceases to astonish me. We had an incident in this school last year regarding TEDx that Mary put an enormous amount of time and effort into it. And she personally took it, personally, when a certain event occurred. We had um, an occasion to vote on something this year involving some part of that incident. And I was watching, and Mary basically led the discussion, started off with a long speech about our job is to do the best we can for kids, for students, both socially and uh, academically. And it was just a beautiful speech, and she totally rose above whatever her personal concerns were and voted what was in the best interest of the school district and the kids. And I just want to say, I've, I've seen a lot of people in life who like to talk the talk, but they rarely ever walk the walk. And I watched Mary do it, and I was never proud of her during that moment. And I don't want to ruin my image, but I will really miss you, Mary. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. That's so lovely. Thank you. Michael? Uh, sure. Um, <clears throat> I, I usually read these, not that I've done many of them, but um, Mary's service to the schools and community reflects her genuine interest in giving every child a chance to develop, grow, and find their own path to success. Whether it be in her role as a school board chair, a member of the Mission and Vision Committee, the Chief Liaison, a member of the Finance Committee, or the board's public relations leader, she always found time to listen, and provide space for different viewpoints and experiences. Mary's commitment to hearing all sides of an issue provided a sound basis for the board and district to navigate difficult situations without losing sight of the big picture. Mary not only listened to stakeholders and board members, she provided clear guidance and direction, combining her professional and personal experiences with her innate ability to identify what the community as a whole expected. Mary's passion for education and her attention to the needs and struggles of every child were constant sources of motivation for the board to explore all options and take risks when needed. Um, Neither say Mary, Mary will be sorely missed. Her contributions to the board are innumerable, and she has set a very high bar for all of us sitting on the board. Mary, thank you for your service and getting us all on the bus. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay. Um, I usually don't read, um, as you probably all know, um, but I want to thank you, Mary. Um, not only it was the one dinner party I went to and sat next to you, and you made the school board seem so smooth. Yeah, never oh. sit next to me at a dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it's, I meet you at a dinner party? Uh, <laughs> you just made it seem very smooth. Um, and you. <laughs> not only your three children you were raising at home and the really active years, um, of high school and middle school and high school, um, you've stepped up for every committee. And from the smallest, when it's just a couple people on the committee and a couple citizens, to the bigger pictures, which is TEDx, as well as chair, as well as, I'm not even going to name them all, but from the small to the big, from the personnel to the policy level, um, you really, you've done amazing work. And it's always been a pleasure. Um, to hear your, what you have to say and to think about who you're thinking about when you make these um, statements. And um, it's been a joy to be with you. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's been a joy. Um, so we have a, a small, the board has a small token of our of appreciation of your service, which will do nothing to represent uh, the, the quantity or the quality of the work that, that you've done on behalf of this, this town. And um, among all the things that people have already pointed out, I, I, I would um, also remind the citizens of Cape Elizabeth of the, the, the most, one of the most difficult and important tasks of the, of, that a school board ever does is the, the job of hiring a superintendent. And uh, Mary began that work with, a, um, with really what became the the, the, the seeds of our mission and vision work um, with, by going out to stakeholders and beginning to 
uh, gather a sense of, wo of what this community was looking for, for on behalf of their, their, the community students. Um, and, and that work with stakeholders formed the basis of, of the search. Um, you had the courage to, to reopen that search when the, the, uh, the, the best possible candidate wasn't available and that's something that um, you know, with, with all of the eyes of the community on you takes tremendous courage and then, uh, and then you led the, the board through the, through the, uh, both through the transition with the interim superintendent and, and um, through a new superintendent with, um, with grace and, 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 and courage and, and uh, with the capability of listening to all, all stakeholders and, and um, uh, and I served very closely with you in, during that period of time and, and will also miss very much working with you, Mary. So thank you. Um, and somewhere. Right behind you. Have, uh, have a little gift. <laughs> Shall we open it later? <laughs> you, you, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, can I say a few you words? You may rebut. May I rebut? <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm, I'm like Michael. Um, I think we Southerners read. <laughs> um, it's with tremendous gratitude to the Cape Elizabeth community that I stepped down um, from my two terms. It has been such a joy. And there are lots of people to thank. Uh, but in the interest of time, I'm going to hit, hit the high notes. Um, first of all, um, thank you to the exceptional Cape Elizabeth District leadership team for kindly and respectfully enduring my questions and concerns and frustrations, in particular the building principles. Um, although my work as a board member required less overlap with our new stars, Kelly and Michael, um, uh, I think Jeff has borne the brunt of more of, of my questions, and I thank you for your level-headed and thoughtful patience with me um, through my service. Um, and thank you to all the district leadership team for um, their service to our schools and to our students. Um, I, even though she's not here, I'd like to issue a thank you to our clever and lively superintendent, Meredith. Um, who, as I was thinking about her, she actually embodies all of the qualities um, that we list in our mission, our um, mission and vision statement. Um, she models um, everything that we want to cultivate in students, perseverance, effective communication, integrity, joy in learning, collaboration, um, and her brilliant leadership style, I feel, brought new promise and energy to this district. So I'm excited to see um, what happens in the future with the strategic plan in general. Um, but mostly, I want to thank the people up here um, and board members that I have served with in the past as well, Rebecca and Kim. Um, you know, I was here long ago for the Rebecca hair flip <laughs> and uh, uh, others as well as Trish Brigham, Karen Burke. Um, Kathy Ray, Linda Winker, Peter Cotter, um, but to this sitting group here, I am so incredibly indebted um, and it has been an honor to serve with these people. They, we are like, it's a, a little hard to explain except we're like one caring, um, close, dysfunctional family. <laughs> <laughs> With all of our all of our um, talents and all of our faults, and and somehow we work very well together. The synergy I've never worked in a group that's had better synergy, um, and uh, you know I'm just so grateful to all of you, to Joe for your razor sharp focus on policy and for cutting that policy book and your perseverance in doing that and. Um, as well as your ability to narrate the most complicated and lengthy motion I've ever heard on my, <laughs> on my tenure on the board. Um, it's been an honor working with you. And Elizabeth, um, my hat is off to you. Your kids are very young. You are busy. You work as a tennis coach. And you bring a very important perspective to this board as a former educator yourself and as the child of an educator. You bring a legacy that this 
that um, adds a great value to this board. So I thank you for, for running and for serving. Um, to Kate, our very own Earth Mother, um, thank you for always being the voice for people who can't often find their voice and for always, always keeping the social and emotional needs of our students, our teachers, our community um, in front and, and in center of everything we do. Um, you serve a very important role and thank you for doing that and keep it up. Um, to David, although we rip each other mercilessly, I really appreciate your wit and your humor, your big picture thinking, and your ability to annoyingly be right most of the time. Um, uh, although crisp is not always part of your extensive uh, vocabulary, I would take you on my team every time, despite the fact we would always go into overtime. <laughs> I think our shortest meeting was the meeting when David missed. Uh, wasn't that like a record-breaking short meeting? I think the longest one was when I talked the most. <laughs> I think so, but thank you. And keep fighting that good fight for middle school math. I'll be right behind <laughs> you on the sidelines. Um, to Michael, I'm so grateful to have a fellow Southerner on the board. And thanks for keeping us focused um, and for being willing to have some very difficult conversations uh, with the premise, hard on issues and soft on people. I've learned a lot from you. Um, and your business acumen and your graciousness have been a gift to our team as well as to the public. And finally, to our fearless leader, John. Uh, serene and composed, kind-hearted, open-minded, quick to assess and slow to speak. Um, I have this theory that you're a closeted Buddhist monk. <laughs> <laughs> And I have multiple incarnations before I get to where you are. Um, but I'm so grateful for having the opportunity to learn from you. Um, thanks for being such an expert listener and leader and cat herder and keeping us all moving forward. Um, I will miss working with all of you and serving with you has been really truly one of my great life's joys. I have loved every minute of it. I mean, there are times I think you serve on committees and you dread the minute, you know, you, you think about it and you dread it. I have loved walking into these meetings um, and serving with you all. And I feel very blessed to have known you and to have served with you. Thanks for the sacrifices you make and um, you'll continue to make on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth schools and our youngest citizens, and best of luck to you all and to Susanna. Um, thank you. All right, thank you, Mary. And now on to uh, the superintendent's report, which again will be delivered by Jane Golding, our director of instructional support. Thank you, Jane, for being here tonight. Thank you. So, Superintendent Nato left this for us. Cape Robotics. The VEX tournament held November 2nd at the Middle School and Pond Cove Elementary School. VEX Robotics teams from Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont competed. Two teams, Team 56D, Haley and Andrew, and 56A, Luke and Anthony, qualified for the Main State VEX Championship in February. Team 56A, Luke and Anthony, also won the Excellence Award in part for their design of a transmission that allows redistribution of power from drivetrain to the lift mechanism, depending upon the need. The Cape Robotics Maker Celebration is scheduled for November 14th, that would be this week, um, in Pond Cove Middle School Cafetorium from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Congratulations to the girls' high school volleyball team and their coach, Sarah Beckel, in winning Class A sportsmanship banner for displaying respect, fair play, honesty, and a love for the game. The team was selected by votes from athletic administrators, coaches, and players. The parent engagement and satisfaction survey, student engagement and satisfaction survey, and the school climate and culture surveys are currently open for responses through November 18th. The student survey is for students grades 5 through 12 
and is being administered during the school day. And we know that the boys cross country was honored tonight. Um, I have a resignation. District Technology Director Eric Kramer has resigned his position with the district. We will be working with the district technology staff to plan for how to manage this transition. And that's it for news. I know there'll be a lot more when Meredith returns from China. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. And, and uh, I want to, when we were on item one and I asked about adjustments to the agenda, I should have mentioned uh, item 6G, um, which uh, we, will, we will take up at our next business meeting in December. Okay. Um, John? John? I just, oh. before we move on to the next item of sure. agenda, and I know we'll probably address this next month, but it just seems timely that, um, I just wanted to give a shout out to the girls um, soccer team at the high school. They won their class D state championships as well. So um, good news all around, we've done well. Thank you. I do hope we will, we will have that team here next at our I hope so meeting, too. So. Um, so on to new business, item six, a, may I have a motion? I move that we approve the job description for the EdTech One Special Education File Clerk. Second, Elizabeth. Um, so there is one change to the job description, which is that it's a 10 hour, I'm sorry, it's a 20 hour, not a 10 hour job. Is that right? Correct. Okay, it's a, ten, it's a 20 hour, not a 10 hour job. Um, so if we can amend the motion. Sure. I like that fact. Um, I move that we approve the job description for the EdTech One Special Education File Clerk um, with the amendment that it's actually for a 20 hour job and not a 10 hour job as listed. Okay, is there any discussion? I do have a question about that. Yes. Um, with the amendment from 20 hours to 10 hours, is it for the same fee as listed in the, or is it just an hourly rate? It's an hourly, it's an hourly rate. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's the same hourly rate. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Item B. Um, this is, we won't need a motion, but these are policies for first read. Joe, would you like to? Uh, certainly. Um, as listed out in this evening's packet, there are a number of policies um, in item 6B that we are putting forth for a first read. And we do ask that um, you read through any of the changes. The um, policies themselves are not only in this evening's packet, which is listed on the website. Um, in, in, of note, I know that we did receive a lot of comments on policy GCQE enrollment of non-resident employees' children. Um, there's been a minor change to that policy. Um, and in hearing a lot of feedback, um, we've taken that feedback into consideration in amending that policy. Um, and then also um, reviewed recently, I'm not quite sure why it's bulleted out differently, um, is policy IGA, but that is also being put forth for a first read. And then also for first reading consideration, um, we have gone through and recommended for deletion a number of policies that are either more procedure than policy or are, um, uh, I'm not quite sure how to say this, frivolous. Um, weren't really necessarily um, policy worthy. And then also um, some of them were just simply a matter of state law. And again, if you have any comments on these first reading of these policies, you can um, reach me or Meredith. And I don't have the date of our next meeting, which would be the deadline for those comments at the tip of my tongue. But it's the first Monday in December, right? Mm -hmm. Did we change that to accommodate for a holiday schedule? I don't think we It's December 2nd. I think it's December 2nd. December 2nd, Monday morning. So if you could, if anyone does have any comments on these policies, if they could get that to Meredith or I, um, Friday, November 29th, that'd be great. Uh, John, 
I have a quick comment. Yes, November David. what? November 29th, Friday, November 29th. Is the what, deadline um, for comments. Before I give my comment, what's what's the date? Uh, what's the time? 7:30. 7:30. Well, I can actually make it this year. I, I do have a variety. I, I will. I would just tell you that I have gone through them all. And I have a host of comments, both substantive, structural, um, and so forth, and all these. I will put them in writing with suggested changes and get them to you by that day, but I have a lot on these. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, John. Um, item C, may I have a motion? I move we approve the extra the, the, the athletic and extracurricular staff nominations as listed in our packet item 6 C a there a second thank you Mary um, is there any discussion I actually have something to say it's yeah. not Sarah Sullivan anymore it's actually Sarah Beck that's her new last name her so her the person hasn't changed but the names changed right okay Boy, Thank you're nitpickier than me. I like it. <laughs> what? I said I like the fact that somebody's nitpickier than me. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pointing like that it. out for us. Thank you. Thank you, Sierra. Uh, is there any other discussion? All those in favor? All right, item 6D. May I have a motion? I move that we approve an unpaid leave for the high school teacher. I don't have the teacher's name in front of me. I shouldn't have made the motion. It's Sarah Harrington. Sarah Harrington for the school year 2013-2014. Second. I'll second. Mary. Uh, is there any discussion? Could I amend that motion to be to um, grant her the leave as set forth in her letter attached to our packet? So it's fairly specific. Um, because that, that it, it defines what leave it is she's thinking, which is not a total leave of 2013, 14 is, it's fairly specific about the time she wants leave for. Okay. So and what we have during? Oh, the letter is in executive session. It's not in the packet. Oh. Well, then I would say that we move it. Um, well, how can that be? It might. It. We we still have to vote on it in public session, so maybe we should read it. We need the name and we need the terms. We don't need to read the letter. Um, but we do have to approve that what her leave is. Uh, yeah. So if we can just get the dates out of that. Does someone have that right in front that of letter. them? Yes, I right have here. it here. Um, I think the leave of absence is, is until the end of the third quarter, which is March 28, 2014. Right. Um, so would you like me to amend the motion to yes. state out the terms of time? John? Please. Okay. Um, I, I move that we approve the unpaid leave for Sarah Harrington, the high school teacher, as stated out um, in her letter of request from Thursday, October 10th, 2013, and returning in time for the start of the fourth quarter on March 31st, 2014. Uh, is there any other discussion? All those in favor? All right, seven zero. Um, item E. May I have a motion? I move we approve the Cape Elizabeth Schools Bloodborne Pathogens Exposure Control <coughs> Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I think Meredith would step in to say that this is a, a plan that's required by law. Um, and uh, there was a change made to the plan that's apparent in the packet, which has to do with including um, the kind of training coaches need um, to deal with bloodborne pathogens. Is there any other discussion? The only question I would have, and I guess Meredith probably the only one to answer it, I, I doubt that the 
state or federal law? I mean, is this the, a plan that's been is in compliance with the CDC standards? I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I would assume that it is, but I don't know. Okay. That's why I, said, I think Meredith know the answer, but it, I would assume it should be, it, it would have to be, otherwise it would not be appropriate for us to approve it. It has to comply with the CDC standards and protocol. But. Um, may I point out that it says in the opening paragraph, in accordance with OSHA Bloodborne Pathogen Standards, 29 CFR. Okay, well, OSHA is not CDC, but we might as well vote on it. I assume it's done right. Any other questions? All those in favor? Okay. Um, item F. Uh, may I have a motion? I move we request, re request the town council seek the issuance of bonds in fiscal year 2016 for the school capital projects as listed in the amount of $1,750,000. Is there a second? I second. Second. Did you get a second? Joe. Joe. Sorry for the tongue tie. It's all right. <laughs> um, okay, Michael? Sure. Are oh, we going to do the plan over? The thank you, Mary. That would be kind of appropriate. Uh, I'm going to turn the lights. <laughs> Uh, my name is uh, Michael Moore. I'm the uh, School Finance Committee Chair. I also serve on the School Buildings and Grounds Committee. Um, just so everyone knows, if you're unable to attend, all these uh, slides, proposals, and all the documents I refer to are uh, included in the School Board Meeting Agenda Packet, where if you go to the School Board website or the Town of Cape Elizabeth website, you can access uh, all these materials. Uh, many of these you've already seen. If You've been following our planning uh, process, so let me uh, jump right in. Tonight's school bond proposal is part of a continuing effort to maintain and manage the significant investments made by Cape Elizabeth's community in the district school, buildings, facilities, and equipment. Over the past two years, the school board's building and grounds committee, finance committee, which includes the entire school board, the Strategic Planning Committee and the entire school board have solicited stakeholder feedback on the district's capital needs and priorities. Additionally, the school board has worked with the town council to provide stakeholders with a comprehensive summary of Cape Elizabeth's overall capital improvement needs. This slide includes a listing of the opportunities provided to stakeholders over the past two years to share their thoughts, 
learn about the school's capital needs and priorities, and understand how the school board plans to maintain the schools. Cape Elizabeth schools facilities represent, represent the largest taxpayer-funded capital asset in Cape Elizabeth. The school facilities alone have an estimated replacement cost value of over $50 million. As shared with the entire community in August and September of this year, the Buildings and Grounds Committee provided a 10-year capital stewardship report. The key conclusions were, one, sustained investments are required to maintain the quality and functionality of the school's facilities, and two, scheduled asset maintenance and capital investments must keep up with depreciation. <coughs> As shared with the entire community in August and September of this year, in November of last year, and again in March of this year during school budget meetings, the school board identified some, some critical capital investment project needs over the next three years. These must-have investments include scheduled roof removal and replacement, heating equipment replacement, and electrical systems upgrades. As most homeowners know, scheduled roof replacements are mandatory and can be a relatively large investment. Similarly, school roof replacements are mandatory and a relatively large investment as well. The cost of a single school roof replacement can exceed half a million dollars, making it difficult to fund through the annual CIP budget. So why bond funding? One, the proposed bonds would fund must-have capital investment projects, including roofs at each school, heating, ventilation, roof equipment, and electrical system upgrades. Bond funding reduces the risk of deferring of necessary investments to maintain this town's single largest capital asset. Later in the presentation, I'll review these specific projects. Two, these must-have investments are long-life assets with useful lives of 25 to 30 years. Bond funding promotes prudent sharing of these investment costs between current taxpayers and future taxpayers. Three, bond funding promotes scheduled asset maintenance and asset and liability matching. As roofs and other assets depreciate, the related liability declines as bonds mature, freeing capital to meet future mandatory capital investment needs. Four, as discussed in the previous slide, the relatively large investment costs for individual must-have projects can create budget volatility. And last, bond, uh, and last, bond funding for a portion of projected capital improvement needs can help minimize the tax impact in the year of the investment, in this case, 2015-2016. I would note bond funding represents approximately 33% of the total projected CIP needs in the next three years, meaning that there will be a required investment through the annual CIP budget to meet these important investment needs. So what are the specific projects? As you can see in the top one is a high school roof replacement. The estimated cost is $800,000. The age of that roof or those roofs in 2016 will be 29 years. And looking at engineering useful life estimates, roofs on average last 25 to 30 years. The second one, middle school roof replacement, $175,000. The age in 2016 would be 32 years. The useful life estimate for such an asset is 25 to 30 years. Pond Cove roof replacement, $175,000. The age of that roof in 2016 will be 31 years. The useful life would be 25 to 30 years. Middle school rooftop heating recovery unit, 325,000 years. The age in 2016 when the work would be done would be 23 years. The useful life is 20 to 25 years. The electrical primary service upgrade at the high school, $275,000. The age of that asset in 2016 would be 48 years. In summary, uh, by category, roof replacement is approximately or 65% of the request. Roof or HVAC equipment is 19%. The electrical systems are 16%. And if you look at the average asset being replaced is 33 years. Uh, as we mentioned, the bond funding would re support required capital investments at all three schools. 
I uh, would note these projects are must-haves. They're not discretionary, nor expansionary, nor new build, nor renovation projects. Uh, as I mentioned, 84% of the projects are roof replacement and roof equipment. <laughs> Included in the presentation packet, also available, like I mentioned, to all stakeholders, are additional details of each project. Um, it was included in a memo by the Buildings and Grounds team uh, in uh, Greg Morrill's, the uh, Director of Facilities. So if you look at the next steps, obviously the first step would be to request the Town Council to seek the issuance of bonds for $1.75 million for school capital improvement projects. Two, uh, if a referendum vote is required, uh, we would request the vote to be held, it says in the first half of 2014, I would say request the vote to be held in time for adequate budget preparation time for the 2015-2016 budget. Three, um, we'll continue, I would recommend the school board continues to communicate to all stakeholders the district's capital investment project needs and the rationale for the proposed bond funding. And last, uh, for the school board to continue to work closely with the town council to coordinate bond the bond funding process and to promote the one town concept. Um, I could give you examples of that, but we've uh, been in communications uh, with, the, with the town council on this proposal, timing, some considerations. Um, so that's the formal presentation. I would know that um, the 10-year capital stewardship report, the joint CIP summary, that includes all of CAPE's needs, which would be community services, school, uh, municipalities are included in an analysis so all stakeholders can see what needs uh, are upcoming. There's also bond funding proposals uh, from the school, which exactly matches this bond funding proposal as well. And I would like um, a couple considerations. Um, we try to be responsive to stakeholders, so um, I would encourage the school board if there's uh, for requests on you know what might the school board do in a budget in the future um, that the budgeting process obviously is an annual budget process that budget it requires uh, 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 the voters to approve so um, I think it's challenging to predict how a school board two years from now may budget when we're still preparing the budget to the 2014-2015. Um, I know there may be, uh, people may need to feel compelled, but uh, we, I would say we don't know what the needs are would be in 2015 and 16, and try to say here's how we're gonna allocate certain dollars for the overall budget. I, hopefully stakeholders underprove that, and the great thing is um, the voters approve to continue the referendum process, so Voters will obviously be part of that discussion as we look at those budgets on an annual basis. Um, I also heard uh, some requests tonight on um, establishing a rainy day fund. Um, we do uh, a lot of contingency planning as part of the annual budget process. Um, while I definitely think there's a lot of analysis that we do on contingency planning, um, that again is something that may be more appropriate for uh, uh, the budget meeting. Um, in terms of, you know, how can we know exactly for sure how much uh, this a roof may uh, cost? Um, a lot of times the way these are written, and this will be up to the town council, it could be up to $1.75 million. Obviously, if we get new information, uh, better estimates, um, obviously we're going to aggressively bid uh, the projects, and if those estimates change, that would be communicated to um, the stakeholders. Um, one reason we're trying to get this done now for 2015 and 2016, if you're not uh, on the school board, or you, you know, the 2015 2016 year begins in July 1st of 2015. Before you know it, we'll be in 2014. So, to plan all these projects, to coordinate these projects so we don't have to interrupt the school year, um, that's the reason for bringing it forward tonight. Um, to provide adequate planning time and um, based on what happens tonight and working with the town council the buildings and grounds committee and greg morals will start um, looking at bidding looking at coordinating the projects and any changes in our estimates we would share uh, with stakeholders and i think the last issue 
was on uh, contractor issues. Um, you know, the district, I imagine, um, will, you know, will look at these issues. I know we've looked at them. Um, but again, uh, you know, based on what happened in the past, does it necessarily change a need going forward? Um, so based on the lives of these assets, we, that could be an option to look at, but it, to me, I don't think it impacts uh, the need for, for, for these investments. And I know I'm jumping around, um, but yes, if you do issue bonds, um, there is an interest component to that. Uh, that's one reason why I'll, I mentioned that bond funding would um, fund uh, roughly 33% of the projected capital needs over the next three years. So this balances um, different stakeholder views on this, but most importantly, it provides a path for us to meet these capital improvement needs um, while minimizing the annual tax impact. Um, so hopefully um, I try to address it. I'm sure there will be more questions. Uh, if you do have questions, please forward us Four to those to the school board, we are open to suggestions, um, but I'm very confident this is a, a great roadmap for the district, and the bond funding is just one component of it. Um, school budget uh, meetings will include looking at the annual bu budget contribution, uh, but I feel confident that this plan will um, be best for the district in terms of minimizing um, the risk that these projects aren't done in the future, and I would just encourage stakeholders to look at some of the projects going on surrounding districts and um, a 1.75 million bond funding um, based on our overall capital needs, I think is uh, very reasonable. So um, if the school board has any questions, fire away. That, that means ask, ask questions if you have them. I don't have a question, but I, I do think you've, what people don't understand is what I think you're trying to articulate. We have to balance a lot of moving parts, and about a third of this is going to be done by bond, about two-thirds of it depends on our tax revenues, both state and local, which we have a hard time predicting. And I think uh, bond, uh, the fact that we're taking, we're doing this by only about one-third by bonding is a reasonable risk to take. In fact, a very conservative risk to take um, because the, the other two thirds are, are, are sometimes beyond our control. So um, I, I support what you're proposing. Michael, uh, yes. Um, I just want to say that to John. Oh, no, so people can hear you. Um, I just want to say that you started this work, or we started this work, a long time ago. And um, I love your uh, committee, uh, your, uh, you always put a blurb in, remember in two months we will be looking at this, these numbers. Remember in three months we'll be looking at this. Remember at the budget we'll be looking at this. And you've carried us through with um, different decisions to make and different um, reports to look at to be best informed about what's happening and I feel very confident with this work. Uh, we've had conversations along the way. The One Town Concept, looking at the Harriman Heron, Heron report, um, I have a really good feeling, one, being a person that's not uh, a math person, the confidence of looking at the comprehensive report of this, I think, um, makes me feel very confident to vote yes. Uh, well, I would add, add to that along those lines, Michael, that um, um, for, the, for the benefit of uh, the public that may be watching, um, the best way to, uh, to understand uh, the underlying thinking behind the proposal tonight is to is to um, uh, follow with the documents that was created, created by your, have been created by your committee um, throughout uh, the process, which began in October 2011, and your first slide indicated, you know, all of the work that went into that process, um, all all of the different um, various looks at the at the needs of the facilities, um, all the different reasoning for. For you know why the work that needed to, needed to be done and what and how 
um, we might finance that work um, going forward. That, that, that all of that information and uh, many of the issues that um, we heard tonight are, you know, can be found um, in, the, in those documents, which very carefully lay out um, the thinking behind, behind where we are now. Um, that, that's a really valuable resource for anybody who wants to understand why the school board is proposing a, a, a bond. And, you know, after, uh, depending on the vote tonight, obviously, uh, like I said, the uh, community dialogue will continue. Um, I didn't want to, we shouldn't presume how we're all going to vote, so obviously uh, we will continue stakeholder dialogue, make, um, I'm sure there'll be frequently asked questions. We'll make those answers available, readily available uh, on the website, uh, any updates from the town council on the process. Um, the whole goal is to you know, promote transparency and answer questions stakeholders have. So this um, would just be the first step in, in the education process. Obviously, uh, in terms of the process itself, the town council has a big say in that, so we'll coordinate. Uh, with, with them, so um, we, you know, the documents are available, and we're going to make it simpler uh, to access on the website. Um, obviously, based on what the school board decides tonight. So, actually, I'm going to sit down. I feel a little <laughs> awkward in this. <laughs> Could I make one point, John? Yes. Um, a question was raised tonight about, and I'm not going to give it too much discussion about whether or not why should we not fund some of this through a lawsuit. The problem with a lawsuit is you don't necessarily win them. And the lawsuits take two to three years. And if we need to do repairs now, we can't very well fund it with monies in, we might get in the future. And they cost money. I'm going to get to that factor. Sorry. There's a risk-benefit analysis in any lawsuit, a major lawsuit against a major company. We could easily cost two to three hundred thousand dollars. You go to arbitration. Arbitration tends to split the baby. So you can end up spending almost as much as you get three years from now when we need to do the repairs now. That's assuming if you win. These are very complex. I don't do construction a lot, but they're very complex. The, the within reasonable standards is something that can be uh, argued about ad infinitum appeals uh, to higher courts. You could easily be waiting multiple years before, you, even if you win, to see this money. Um, I think even if, and I haven't studied this issue, but I, if somebody was to ask me, and I'm technically no longer a lawyer, uh, although I was one, that if somebody was to ask me, which would you rather do, fix your buildings now and roll the dice in a lawsuit that you might get half the money you need five years from now, my answer would be you'd be nuts to do it anyway other than uh, build with a, a finite expected cash flow from a bond or from revenues, that's how you fix your problems, not the lawsuits. Thank you, David. Are there any other comments? I would just like to thank Michael for ushering this process through. Yes. You have been very thoughtful, considerate, and thorough in every presentation that you've ever given the board on these issues, and it's enabled us to move forward on these future budgets in a predictable way um, that also address clear priorities to protect our assets before they require costly repairs from damage. So I appreciate the thoroughness and also the obvious um, collaborative approach that you've taken to putting all this forward. So thank you. I would second that. I was like, ditto. She just stole my thunder. I was waiting. <laughs> Safe. Well, it's important to understand, I, I, you know, I, for people to understand that how um, th these presentations have been extremely thorough, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. extremely carefully presented. Uh, Michael has, has held our hands through this process for a very long time, and um, any, anyone interested in this issue um, it has at their disposal some documents that make um, the, 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 this reasoning very clear. Yes. Uh, and I think that's, that's very valuable. And I think it's the reason why we're, we're getting more comments than questions tonight as we consider this issue, that the board has had lots and lots of opportunity to understand uh, why this is the, 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 the course of, 
action that's on the table. So thank you for that, Michael. Any other comments? All right, all those in favor? Okay. No, I forget. lost my place. Committee report. All right, we're on. We are, um, again, we are not, uh, we're going to skip item G, uh, and we are, will move on to committee reports. Do we have any committee chairs? I'm not a chair. Oh, I'm on a committee. Okay. Any committee members who have reports to make? Um, Town Center Planning Committee has a meeting next Monday, November um, 18th, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Is that a, uh, is that a, that's not a meeting to gather public input? So no, that's just no, it's just a meeting where they'll be assessing public input and, okay. and um, moving forward with a plan. Um, so the reason we're on that um, is because the schools take up, you know, the schools take up a lot of the town center property. So okay. for anyone who's interested. Thank you again for your service on that committee. You're welcome. Are there any other committee members with reports to make? No. Okay. Uh, item eight, school board agenda requests. Are there any requests for future agenda <laughs> items? No. Okay. Um, item nine, announcement of upcoming meetings. Uh, so Mary mentioned one on the 18th. Also on the 18th, the School Board Negotiations Committee is meeting. Um, on the 26th, we have our regularly scheduled monthly workshop. We're addressing um, one of the goals that we set at the beginning of the year, um, which is to look at the achievement gap in our schools. Um, so that should be a very interesting workshop. Um, and on, I think it's, is that on, on our calendar, it says the 9th of December is the policy meeting, second Monday. So we'll have to confirm that that's, yes, that's we will. correct. That's what it says on the public calendar, so. Please let me know. We pushed back the meeting because of the holiday, and so I'm sure going forward it just got yeah. So, oh, okay. That, that may be what happens. So may, that may be, have to be corrected on the calendar. I bet it does. Okay. Because it usually is the first Monday. Okay. Oh, I wanted to mention something, John. Yes, Mary. Um, I'm. I'm. Are you done with dates? Yes. Um, one of the things I should have mentioned during recognition, or should have asked, uh, should have spoken with you about, was um, I wanted to thank Kate for her service on the library committee. They presented their report last week. Or was it earlier this week, Kate? I think Thursday. Oh, it was last Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. Um, and for those who have not looked at it, it the report um, is very impressive. Uh, and uh, you can watch it on the town council, on the website. You can um, you know, look it up and, and watch it. But Kate, that was a labor of love. That was many, many, many meetings. 29 meetings in like 31 weeks, 30 four weeks yes. something, um, but a, a really nice document for anyone to look at. Very um, thorough document, um, so I didn't want that to go by without thank you. some recognition for Kate's blood, sweat, and tears. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Kate. That uh, said, item 10, adjournment. Do we have a motion? Oh, I move that we adjourn. Oh, I move that we adjourn. <laughs> uh, still, I'll take Mary's motion. Does anyone? <laughs> and can motion. can everybody stay a little bit? I want to get a picture of, of all of my um, all of my friends. Is there a second? second. I will second Mary. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Susanna. Will you?